PA and Pastor Jai with the alternatives, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God, directly into the comfort of your home. Thank you very much for connecting with us on a weekly basis, and thank you for all those nice messages, comments, questions. Uh, keep them coming by God's grace. We do our best to answer them as much as possible. On Friday, uh, join us on our Zoom at 7.30. If you have any questions, you can reach us on Zoom. If you want to connect on Zoom, check it out on our Facebook page and just click and you'll be connecting with us live on Zoom. So, I've been talking about faith in hard times. And we've looked at a number of uh, uh, subjects and, and scriptures and keys how to remain uh, standing in the midst of crisis. And uh, my text message has been in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, where Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible. All things are possible if you believe. And we've looked at different aspects of how we can survive in, in, in storms of life, in difficulties of life, when challenges of life, uh, uh, we face different circumstances that is beyond our control. We've looked at scripture in different ways. And I've also received good reports from some of you that because of the teaching, uh, help has come your way. We give God all the glory for that. And some things are happening. Miracles are beginning to come in. I also received a message from the prison, somebody who's watching. And as a result of the message of the teaching on faith in difficult times, alone in the prison, God has strengthened him and encouraging him. And is connected with us now via TV. To God alone be all the glory. Now, in my teaching today, I want to talk about having faith or having, are you having difficulties in trusting God? Having difficulties in trusting God. And I want to assure you that the teaching today is what many of us have been waiting for. When I was preparing this, the Holy, Holy Spirit ministered to me, and there are some things that I'm going to say today that perhaps it, it, it will seem like the, the Holy Ghost sorted you out to be able to reach out to you with what you need for this moment or for this hour. We acknowledge that it is never easy to trust God when circumstances are not looking good. Economic challenge, sickness in our bodies, um, and the doctors have confirmed that that sickness is, is going to be with you for the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, you have a rebellious child who has left home and who is doing damage and, and causing damage to your life. And this has been going on for many, many years. Marriage is broken down. All that you have worked for all your life, it seems, is gone with the wind. And how do we trust God in such circumstances? And uh, how do we remain on top, above the waters? COVID-19 is another thing. Some, of, some people have been contacted with COVID-19. Some people's members of their family have died of COVID-19. And, and it's not helping. Many people have lost their job. And others are living in fear. Fear of what will happen. Fear of if this happens. We begin to ask this question. If, 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 or what? Now, all these, as followers of Jesus Christ, we want to trust God. But sometimes we find it very difficult to trust God, to put our faith in God in such circumstances or in such situation. In this teaching, I will give you two prayers that the Lord has helped me in my personal life. So I, I'm not, I don't know it all, but we all face challenges, persecution, trouble, tribulation, storms comes from everywhere, and it comes to each and every one of us. But in my quest to be able to live a life of dominion over circumstances and dominion over situations of life, in my quest to become, to become solid in, in the midst of trouble so that I will not be moved by the wind, I will be moved by the, by, by the word of God. 
I found these two prayers that have been very important in my life, and I'm going to share it with us today. But before I talk about the prayer, I want us to look back at Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. I'm not going to read them all, but you have them. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and verses 1 to 8. Jesus was teaching by the lake of Gennesaret, and just like we are doing today, he was doing a Bible study or, or evening teaching or early morning teaching, whatever we want to call it. And on the other side, there was of the, of, of the sea, there were people who were facing difficult times, challenges, frustrated because the Bible says all night these fishermen have left their family, left their home to go on the sea all night to, 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 uh, um, to catch fish because this is their livelihood. And the Bible says they toil, the word the Bible uses, they toil all night and they catch nothing. And uh, as a result of that, they were now cleaning up their, their nets. They were disappointed. They were, they were frustrated that all their labor all night has gone to nothing. Jesus stepped into the boat of one of these people. And we are told that the boat he stepped in was the boat of Simon Peter. He asked him to take out his boat and his fishing net. Now listen to this. He said, let's go on a fishing trip. Uh, these are the people that are tired all night. These are the people that are angry, perhaps, frustrated, perhaps, disappointed, perhaps. Things are not working the way it should work for them. And then this rabbi comes in and said, listen, guys, let's go out, let's fish. Now, you can imagine what is going on in them. Jesus said, throw your net and so that you can go for a catch. Now, when, Peter, when Jesus told Peter to throw his net in verse 4, it's amazing that Simon put out, he said to him, Simon, put out your net into the deep. Let down your net for a catch. Now, remember that Peter was a seasoned fisherman. He was an experienced fisherman. Jesus was not a fisherman. Jesus was a carpenter boy. And all he knows is about nails and hammer and wood. Nothing. All, all he knows is about preaching the gospel, but not about fishing. And Peter understands this. So when Jesus said to Peter, throw, let down your net so that for a catch. Now, I can imagine Peter on the inside of him after washing the net and ready to go back to his wife and his family to tell them the bad news that, listen, we did not catch fish. He looked at Jesus politely and he said, Master, We've worked hard all night, and we have caught nothing, absolutely nothing. But because you said so, I'm going to let down my net. Basically, Peter was saying to Jesus, you are asking me, what you are asking me does not make a single sense to me. What you are asking me doesn't make a single sense to me. But because you said so, let's go for it. Now, what I want to share here with us is, I have learned from God and from the scripture, listen to this, that when we face difficult situations, listen to this, what he asks us to do in such circumstances, most of the time, bring doubt into our mind to say, does God really understand does God really know what I'm going through? I'm going through this particular challenge. And you are asking me something that does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. I've just toyed all night, Peter said that. I've gone out of my house all night. I'm a seasoned fisherman. I know how to fish. You don't know how to fish. And you're asking me to go and throw my net for a catch. But God does that. He gave us those kind of instructions that look stupid and silly because in them, listen to me, the awesomeness and the greatness of God will emerge. But whatever he say at such time will never make sense to a natural man. I spoke last Sunday on how Jesus told us to forgive somebody who offended us and continue to offend us 
seven times a day. And he said, if that individual come back, comes back to us, we forgive seven times again. It doesn't make sense. The, the, the instruction that Jesus gives us in the midst of difficult situations, in the midst of storms of life, are usually, they, don't, they are not logical. They don't make sense. They are not reasonable. And we must understand that when it comes to that situation, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to take over. We need to, we need to give ourselves, as it put ourselves into a situation where we must understand that God has told us in his word, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. There are times we need to learn how to pray. This simple prayer, I mean, these are times we need to learn how to pray. This simple but honest prayer. This is what I do in my own difficult situation. And I want to share it with you. Number one, we need to learn to pray, Lord, help me to obey you when I don't understand you. Write that down. It's on the screen. It says, Lord, I mean, Lord, help me to obey you. Even when I don't understand you, it's a very, very important prayer. You must learn how to pray. Lord, help me to obey you even when I don't understand it. In, in, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, the Bible says, Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Therefore, this is what God is saying. Don't let the circumstances dictate for you. God knows the situation you are. God understands that you're going through a very difficult time and at such time, he says, my ways are not your way. And I think this is the key to pleasing God in difficult situations. Once we understand that verse, that passage, then we can pray that prayer in peace and we can pray that prayer knowing that God is in control. And listen to me, knowing that we are also in control of the situation. Simon Peter, when Jesus asked him to throw his net back into the deep, um, after toiling all night and getting nothing, he obeyed him, even though he did not understand Jesus' logic. So, Lord, help me to obey you, even though I don't understand you completely. We don't have to understand completely before we obey completely. I want you to write that down. You can hashtag that. You can, you can say amen to that. You don't have to understand him completely before you obey him completely. A lot of time we think trusting God is only in bigger stuff. You know, maybe God wants us to leave the country to go to another country as a missionary. Maybe he wants us to change our career. Maybe he wants us to go to India or Africa for a mission. We, we often think that is the, the when, you know, when it's time to trust God. But trusting God must be on a daily basis in a simple stuff. Very, very simple thing. We must learn to obey him. And the small uh, 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 thing we obey him leads us to bigger miracles that we desire from him. We don't have to understand him completely before we obey him completely. I don't want you to forget that. You know, we don't have to understand him completely before we can obey him completely. I have also learned that I'm still learning. I, haven't, I don't know everything. But I'm still learning that to do, uh, to be able to build and grow a relationship with God, a kind of relationship that will help me to trust him in difficult situations, one thing I want you to write down, you must learn to cling on his promises. Learn to cling on his promises in that particular area that matters to you, that particular issue you are facing, that particular situation, it could be family, it could be finance, it could be you are frustrated because there is no job, 
There is no money in your account. Everything is going down, marriage and career. Whatever the situation, sickness, you learn to cling on the promises of God in that particular area. Cling on him. The Bible tells us, we saw this in the life of Abraham. When things are not working, it, it, it says it clearly in, in Romans chapter 4. It, it talks about his body is not dead. We saw it in the life of Jacob. When he went to pray, he said, God, I will not let you go unless you bless me. We saw it in the life of Paul the Apostle. Clinging on the promises of God in that particular area that matter. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. What God is saying to us is that no matter how bad things may look, no matter how terrible things may look, trust me. And don't allow your logics or your emotion or what you hear from people or what people are telling you, don't allow that to dictate the solution for you. Trust me. And don't allow logic to take place. Trust me on the mountain top. Trust me in the lowest valley. Trust me. And this is the only way we know. And this is the only way we can cling on the promises of God. So the key is to cling on God in difficult situation. And we have to get this in our mind. We have to let go. Let go of every other stuff we are clinging on. If you are clinging on your marriage, if you are clinging on your husband, if you are clinging on your wife, if you are clinging on the government, if you are clinging on, the, the Bible said, some trust in chariots, some trust in men. But we will trust in the name of our Lord. To cling on God in difficult situation means you must let go of every other stuff that you've been clinging on so that your relationship with God can, can, can bring about the miracle you desire. Jesus is the only wise God. That's what the Bible says. He said, he is the rock and he will never leave you. He will never forsake us. This understanding, we must have to see the miracle we desire from God. The situation may still be visible. The circumstances may still be visible. But we must understand that God is our very present help in the time of need. Psalm 46 verse 1. He's our very present help in the difficult time. He's our very present help in the most, most terrible situation we are facing. He says, I'm your very present help in Psalm, Psalm 46 verse 1. So, Lord, help me to obey you. Even when I don't understand you must be the prayer we need to pray in that circumstance. The good news is this. We don't have to know the outcome before we obey him. Hallelujah. That's the good news. You don't have to, have to know the outcome before you obey God. Outcome is his responsibility. Listen to me. Obedience is our responsibility. The outcome is his responsibility. Obedience is our own responsibility. A simple act of obedience always results in our miracle. And you can see that in the sto story of Simon Peter. He obeyed the Lord and, and the Bible says God actually rewarded him with a catch that perhaps he has not got in almost a month or almost a year. In verse 6, he says, when they had done so, they caught so much, a large number of fish, that their net began to break. So they called, verse 7, they called their partners in other boats to come and help them. And they come and fill both boats, and it began to sink. Lord, help me to obey you, even when I don't understand you. We don't have to understand him completely. The second prayer, as we begin to round up, that I want us to put in mind, and I want you to write it down, is, Lord, 
help me to surrender to you when I cannot control the situation. The first one is, Lord, help me to obey you when I don't understand you. And the second one is, Lord, help me to surrender to you when I cannot control the situation. Most of the time, we know and we can sense that we are, we can't, we are not in control of the situation. We know it and we can sense it. But instead of surrendering to Christ, instead of surrendering to God and let God be God in that situation, we still allow our logic to take place, our emotion, our understanding. Even people, we allow them to begin to dictate for us what to do. And we begin to push the word of God aside. We begin to push the promises of God aside. Our focus is not longer on Jesus. Our focus is on what people are saying. Until we back off, God will not step in. Until we let go, God will not step in. Lord, help me to surrender to you when I cannot control the situation. Again, we saw that in Peter's situation. And we saw the way he handled that situation in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible so said, when, and so... When James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Peter's partner, partner in business, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you are going to be fishing for people. The question is, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? That's the question. Jesus is saying exactly the same thing to you and I. Don't be afraid. I am with you in this situation. I'm with you in this circumstance. And let me, let me just look at you and tell you the same thing. Even though you don't feel it, even though you don't see it, Jesus is with you in that situation. And he's telling you, don't be afraid. In whatever situation you find yourself, don't be afraid. Then the next verse. We were told that they left everything and followed Jesus in verse 11. So they pulled their boats up to the shore left everything and follow him. What is it that God has been trying to take away from you? What is it that God has been trying to take away from us? But we are still clinging on it. We are still clinging on it. God is trying to take it away from us so that he can bless us, so that he can restore us, so that he can bring miracle in our life. But we are still clinging, no matter what that is, unless we let go. Like Peter, he pulled their boats on the shore and left everything and they follow Jesus. Until you surrender that area or that thing you are holding on to, it may be people it may be your bank account. It may be some other situations that I don't know. Some other circumstances that I don't know. But you know, I know what is it that is holding me back from trusting in Christ. I'm putting my faith completely in the Son of God who died and gave himself for you and I on the cross of Calvary. Until we give our all to Christ, then we are having difficulty and we will continue to have difficulties in trusting him. David put it this way in Psalm 20 verse 7. He says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of our God. What or who are you trusting your life on, your situation on? Who are you holding on to now? Is it because the economy or some of you, your income or your business, your finances, you are financially stable? You think, what are you trusting? The government or maybe the bad medical report that you receive has make you to run to someone somewhere else apart from God to begin to trust him. What or who are you trusting with your situation or your challenges? Listen to me as I close. You don't have to understand completely before you obey completely. 
if you take anything away out of this 30 minutes, 20 minutes I've been talking, this is key. You don't have to understand completely before you obey completely. Clinging on his promises in that particular area of your life is what matters. Lord, help me to surrender to you. I, and Lord, even though I cannot control the situation, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Maybe you are watching on the TV. Maybe you are online right now. I don't know if God is speaking to you. But I want to close with this. When you give God everything, and you trust him in everything. God steps into your situation. Maybe God has not come into your situation because you're still holding. You're still clinging on something. The Bible says trust in the Lord. The word trust there means clinge on the Lord. We don't have always the power to be in control of our circumstances. But listen to this. We have the power to surrender to God. In our circumstances. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the place to start from. You must be born again. Unless a man is born again, he cannot, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And if you are born again, you still need to learn how to trust in Jesus. It's a daily walk with him. Daily trusting him. And God loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. He, he wants to give you victory in that situation, in that circumstances. And if you have given your life to Jesus, let us hear from you on any of those numbers on the screen. It's 799-42261 or 62-795-72874. Or you can send us a message on Instagram and uh, we will like to hear from you. Until next time, may the Lord bless you.